Hi folks, uh, Certified Whore here. I guess that I should kind of make an update on my water only fast. I was, I had a goal, I guess, of um, 40 days water only, which I know that's absolutely insane. And that was really how I felt when I heard the spirit say it in my head. I was just walking across the house and he said, you need to fast 40 days, 40 days water only. And I was like, I just heard you loud and clear, didn't I? He was like, yeah, you did. And I was like, crap. <laughs> Wasn't what I wanted to hear, but I knew obedience was the only answer if I wanted to keep hearing that still small voice. So I listened and I endeavored and I said flat out, I can't do that. You, Lord, you know I can't do that. I can't do 40 days. I can only do it if you do it for me. And he said, don't worry about it. Basically, you know, I just got this feeling like I'm going to be there. You won't have to worry. I'm going to be there. And he was. Um, I went 12 and a half days with water only. Salt, some magnesium pills, calcium magnesium zinc pills, a couple fish oil pills. Um, just, just a little stuff. And, um... Also, uh, pickle juice, probably a, probably a half of a big jar of pickle juice over the whole thing. A swig here, a swig there. It, when I started to feel sick, <clears throat> when I started to feel like lightheaded, dizzy, just not, not okay. I knew that the next thing after not okay was relenting. So I would say, well, if I'm going to quit, I might as well just have some pickle juice and stay in it. And I did. Um, but yeah, 12 and a half days probably drank 10 or 20 gallons of water. There's no telling. Water started to taste terrible. My mouth tasted terrible. I did also um, uh, garlic salt. So I was licking a lot of salt just for, you know, because you need a lot of salt to live for water retention. But um, garlic salt was like one of the only things that was strong enough to take the terrible taste out of my mouth. Your tongue starts to hurt and just your mouth just starts to taste bad water tastes bad i mean i know it's hard to believe water could taste bad but it really did um <clears throat> so how i failed it, it wasn't hunger it wasn't pain i didn't i didn't give in to uh like agony the agony is the beginning the, by day four you know the, the craving and desire to eat is basically gone Day five, seven, eight, it was like, pfft, I feel fine. I mean, I, I was a little weak. I didn't, I didn't have like the strength to go hiking or haul shingles up a, a ladder, but I wasn't, in, I wasn't in pain and I cooked other people food, a lot of it. I cooked my, my dad was visiting. So I cooked food for him and the kids um, when I had them quite a few times, like my favorites and I didn't give in on that. Other than accidentally I ate one uh, little bite of a home fry because I was boiling them to get them soft and I forgot that I was fasting and I just, you know, I ate one little tiny one to see that it was soft enough. And I was like, oh my God, I'm, oh God, I, I can't, I can't do this. I'm fasting. I'm going to ruin it. So, I mean, it was like that big. But, um, <clears throat> the big issue that made me give in was like a huge psychological deployment. Dis disappointment so the 10 acre property next door has been a I've rented it for a long time it's been a big source of trouble and it, I knew it was going to go up for tax auction for years and my father wanted it he flew in from a thousand miles away we attended the auction the auction was going really slow we were there for hours and it was still on parcel like I don't know 30 and the parcel we were there for was 160 <clears throat> out of about 400. He was the only bidder. My father was the only bidder. And I was just there to, you know, there with him. So I left to go get my uh, baby mama a coffee down the street because she, she works right across the street from where we were. So I went just to be a nice guy. We had had a fight the night before, which was really distressing to me, like really, really distressing. 
The next day I went and got her coffee kind of as a peace offering. And I grabbed some food for my dad on the way back, some like junk food to bring back into the courthouse. And I walk back in and he's not there. Like I walk back in and he's not sitting at the table. So I sit down, I look up at the board and it's like, oh my God, we're, we're on our page. I hustle over to the table to sit down and I'm thinking, you know, that, oh, they're at 167, but the way the auction works, you could, they'll allow you to go backwards. You could just say, hey, can we do 160, 162? Can, you know, if they skip one, they'll go back. And cause not every parcel has a bid. <clears throat> so I sit down at the table. My dad comes walking back in a minute later. I'm like, hey, come on, come on, it's, it's up, it's up. And he hustles over, he sits down. Now we're all like, okay. And I let that current auction that was going finish out. And I said, hey, can we go and do 161? And the auctioneer says, that's been sold. And it, it was like, it was devastation. It was total devastation. Like, you're kidding me, we missed it. I didn't get upset with my father. I didn't have to because he was beating himself up. Like he, he was, he was like sick beside himself. And he was so beside himself, like the, the shock of what had just happened. He's like, how did that go so fast? They just went through a hundred of them. I've only stepped out for 10 minutes There's, and they went through a hundred of them was, was basically his mentality. He just went to go to the bathroom. And apparently the, the few sheets, you know, pages, before must have all been rubbish that no one wanted because they don't go through every single auction one at a time. They just say anything on page three, anything on page five. Oh, you want one on page six? Okay, let's do that one. Anything on page seven. So it just went really fast. And here he is, like we went through a lot of, we talked about this for years. We went through a lot of stuff to get the money transferred, open bank account, you know, in-state local bank uh, check because you have to pay in full, you know, at the end of the auction. So there was a lot of preparing for this and it, it fell apart. Like it totally fell apart. He was beside himself. He got up and walked out to just like grieve. Actually, he took, he took my phone cause his phone wasn't working. So he took my phone to go call his uh, girlfriend. My, I mean, you could call her my stepmom. They've been together almost 30 years. <clears throat> he went outside and I was just sitting in the in the courtroom and I had to stay because I had to try to track down who bought it so we could see if they wanted to sell it and I did I, I managed that but it's not really what the story is about it's about the temptation it's about the weakness it it was the distress like there was so much emotional distress not hunger not pain there was so much emotional distress from that circumstance so between the fight with the spouse the night before and then this event that day it was like my soul was destabilized <laughs> and so here I am with all these stupid cookies that I don't even like they were peanut butter cookies I got I grabbed them for him and like an orange juice and some some crackers and it was like in my head I was just saying screw it like I, I need comfort right now and I unwrapped this and I knew I was going to do it. I looked at him and I was like, I knew I was going to do it. It was just like the feeling that you get when you're a porn addict and you're trying your heart out to stay away. And something, some stressor arises to where you just say, I'm not strong enough to stay away. I just have to do this this one more time. And you go for it. Like you push the shame and the guilt and the failure and the the like self condemnation to the side and you go after this self medication <clears throat> I'm unwrapping a cookie with the same exact level of disgust and self loathing as if I was about to go you know whip out some porn and I, as the thing went to my mouth I said Lord I'm sorry please forgive me I failed you again and I, and I ate a cookie and I knew it wasn't going to be one bite and I'm going to get back on the wagon. Nope. It was like, I'm, I'm off the wagon today. And so I basically binged on purpose, knowing full well what I was doing. I knew that I knew this was not the way to go back to 
refeeding after 12 and a half days without eating. I knew that. It was, and I just, I had a reckless feeling. Even though, you know, to the normal non, I hate to say that non-godly is normal, but to the average Joe, to the lost, to those of you who think God's a fairy tale and whatever else, um, you heathen, as the Bible would say, this, is, this sounds insane. Like, so what if you ate a cookie, right? So what if you look at porn? So what this, so what that? Well, I'm not really talking to you. Honestly, you can't get it. You cannot understand it. Until you have studied the Bible for a pretty long time and truly believed that it is the Word of God, that Jesus is who He said He is, until you have experienced walking with Christ and the transformation that He brings into a person's life, this can't make sense to you. And I'm sorry for that. It, it can't make sense to you. There's nothing that I could say that would prove it. There's nothing that I could defend, you know, against your accusations that this is insane. And, and I was the accuser at one time. I was the atheist. I was the accuser. I was the one that says, prove it. What you're thinking is dumb. You're self-delusional. I was that guy. I get it. I totally understand your argument. I made that argument. I made all those arguments. And now I'm living the opposite. And praise the Lord that I was wrong and he was right. Because my identity crisis that was built in childhood is being resolved by getting a new identity in Christ. And even though I didn't do 40 days like I said I was going to, I fell short. But what did the Bible say I would do? It says we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The glory of God was, was water for 40 days. Well, I'm not God. I don't have his glory. I don't... I don't have my own glory, but I get to share in His, and I get to share it with you, which is an honor and a privilege, and I'm not worthy. So <clears throat> I'm disappointed in my weakness, but it was an incredible experience. The, the whole thing, the longer the days went on, the more that it became so evident that it all boiled down to discipline. Like the whole thing was about discipline. Everything about Jesus going to that cross was discipline because there was no one stopping me from eating. There was food in the fridge. There were people saying, you sure you don't want one? Um, there was a bottle of water in my one hand and a choice in the other. And I had to continually have the discipline to choose the water that I did not want but I wanted to for the sake of him. I wanted to for the sake of the, the prayers that I had put out there and wanting them to be answered. You know, wanting to have a closer walk, like I had to choose. Choosing that water, to drink water that tasted like butt, that was the same as choosing Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I'm going to keep choosing you. I'm going to keep choosing you. I'm not going to stop choosing you. So the guilt and the shame of, the, of that cookie was... Choosing something so frivolously, you know, temporarily small, worthless, something so small, a cookie. You know, it's easy for us to point a finger at Judas Iscariot and say, you betrayed God for 30 pieces of silver or for a piece of land or, or whatever it was. <clears throat> I betrayed him for a freaking peanut butter cookie I didn't like. I betrayed him for nothing. And yet he still forgives me. Like, it, it makes you have to say, boy, there's some pretty big betrayals that have happened in the relationships in my life. I'm harboring resentment and carrying around disgust and anger and grudge with humans that have betrayed me. But they betrayed me generally over some pretty big things. And a lot of more big things that I did. And here's me betraying God for a cookie. You know, it, it puts a perspective. And it helps you to loosen up your, your grip on these things. I stayed in a prayer journal pretty much every day. I mean, I might have missed a day here and there. But I've really been pretty good about staying in a, in a prayer journal and filling it 
really filling this book up fast. Sometimes five pages, six, seven pages even, of just sharing my truest, deepest thoughts with, with the Lord. And that has had incredible, just, it's been an incredible blessing. It has increased the, the intimacy of my walk with the Lord. And that is stabilizing my life and replacing the broken identity of my childhood and uh, my father being down here and we've talked about everything everything and and no hard feelings either it's like it's it's all water under the bridge you know i'm going through a hard time in my life he was going through a hard time in his life like he can he can relate and say i've been there and i've been ahead and i can look back on my mistakes and i can see yours and let me tell you this and let me tell you that and like i'm not fighting him on it tell me dad tell me what you see what am i doing wrong if I wasn't, if I wasn't walking close to the Lord, I couldn't hear my father. <clears throat> the man who was punching me with fists when I was a little kid, and we talked about it. Do you think that I could hear the guy who, you know, I stood up for my little brother. And my mother came home screaming. We embarrassed her, and she discarded us. She drove us home 90 miles an hour pulled in the driveway and said take these effing kids disowned us my father my father comes in and punches me across the house <clears throat> if i didn't have jesus in my life i couldn't be okay with that like i get where he was at i i get it now the anger management that a certain type of spouse and a certain type of relationship the the failure just the level of extreme anger and um impulse control that comes from a certain type of marriage because I, I've experienced that now I've experienced that type of marriage so here's a guy who didn't exactly win the dad of the year award back then but he's in my life today and I wouldn't trade him for anything I, you couldn't get me to accept another father he's he's great I love the shit out of him excuse me I love this I love the stuffing out of him you couldn't get me to choose another dad And you couldn't get me to walk away from Jesus either. I might betray him for a cookie, but I'll still shout his name right after. And he forgives me. Praise the Lord, he forgives me over and over and over. So that's what I have to do for everybody else in my life, is forgive him over and over and over. And it's easier said than done, but that's what I endeavor to do with what time I have left on this earth. So I hope that this video finds somebody and is a blessing to somebody. I hope that something I've said has struck a chord and that if you haven't before, you'll consider surrendering your life to the one who will treat it the best. Like, if you owned a race car and you wanted to win races, but you weren't a very good driver, wouldn't it be smarter to hire someone else to do the driving so that your car can be in the, you know, on the podium? If you're a prideful idiot, then you'll say, no, I'm the only one who can drive it, and you'll lose and lose and lose. If you were smart, you would hire the best driver that there is by humbling yourself and saying, I can't drive as good as that guy, as good as that girl. So what if I own the race team? So what if I own the car? So what if I built the car? If I can't win by being the driver, I should step aside and let someone else who can win do that job for me. And that's really what it is when you appoint Christ to be your leader. You're saying, Lord, I can't steer this thing like you can. You step into my shoes and you take the wheel. And I'll pull up anchor and I will drift wherever you, you know, wherever you blow me to, I'll drift along. I'm not gonna put my anchor down or set the GPS. Like, Lord, you know where you want me to go. You set the GPS, you take the wheel. That's how it's done. Thanks for watching guys. God bless you.